And if you'd put that down and walk back over here, we can get the show started. Get stuffed. What, and end up with a face like his? Who? That bloke that keeps staring at us through the window. Uh, we on here. Oh, <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, take no notice of that, folks. That red light came on. Yeah, I was wondering what that light was. I well, thought those girls might have come back again. Definitely for that, that's for sure. Not around here. Ah, uh, yeah. This is the DGB in the shed talk. There's definitely no talent in this town. <laughs> that's for sure. You've got the Aussie Dead Man Toad and, of course, your little favourite, the Roadie Snake. If there is, they're all taken, they're all being all taken by you know what. Yeah, well, what do you expect? Some, some, some that don't have jobs, but they sell, they sell other things. I can't understand how they can drive around in cars with the music that loud you can hear them from two blocks away. Yes, well, I can't understand why caravanners can't do the speed limit on the highway. Same reason, no brains. Uh, they fly apart, they, they, they pull, they pull out from a T section, they'll fly, and they'll fly up the highway, and as soon as you get behind them, they <laughs> on the brake. Yeah, speed up to pass and then slow down to a crawl. Yeah. Well, the people that speed and when you over truck, over truck, when you get to overtake them, they try to race you. Yeah. Clowns. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, what have you got for us tonight, showcase-wise? We have Steve Earle. He was born the 17th of January, 1955, makes him 69 years old. For those of you who remember Steve Earle, in 1988 he brought out Copperhead Road, which is one of the songs. On. Uh, born Stephen Fan Earl, an American country rock and folk singer songwriter, began his career as a songwriter in Nashville and released his first EP in 1982. Earl's breakthrough album in the 86 debuted, debuted album Guitar Town uh, led single peak number seven on the Billboard Hot Country chart. Uh, Two, ch uh, yeah, two children, uh, Amy Dodson and Justin Towns Earl, and one grandchild, Eta St. James Earl. <laughs> Poor kid. Um, he married a few times. <coughs> Sucker. So, uh, silly boy, once is enough. Keep saying to people, why buy the cow and you can get the milk for free? Yeah, well, um, he's had four additional nominations in the same category. Copyright Road was released in '88, as I said, which is one of the best selling singles and one of the best selling records ever, as far as I am concerned. Uh, he was born in Virginia, Fort Monroe. Uh, he, orig and he originates now in San Antonio, Texas. The Copperhead Road album peaked at number 10 in the mainstream rock chart and had, to, and had a 21st century res resurgence, reaching number 15 in the hot rock and alternative songs chart, buoyed by, ver buoyed by vigorous on-sale sale, online sales. The uh, song's been recorded by Johnny... He has, his songs have been recorded by the likes of Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Willie Nelson, uh, the Ironman, Travis Tread, Vince Gill, Patty Loveless, uh, Bob Seger, and quite a minute, even Emmy Lou Harris. So, uh, he first appeared on film and television notably as recurring characters in HBO's critically acclaimed show The Wire and a Trem. He's also written a novel and a play and a book of short stories. Earl is the father of singer songwriter Justin Towns Earl, with whom he frequently has as, 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 as sung with. So that's a little bit of the history of the man. Um, I'm going to go into everything. Be here all night. Yeah, well, he actually identifies as a socialist and tends to vote for the Democratic candidates. Silly boy. Very um, silly. Anyway, tonight we have justice in Ontario. This highway is mine. Which basically I like to play when I'm driving down the highway. And the foot goes down and my head goes out the window. Um, literally. And Copperhead Road. Yeah, so, it's. 
and uh, by the way folks um, I'm sure you will have heard by now that on Monday nights when I do the Rock and Roll Express starting at 9 o'clock I have started interviewing people with a uh, interesting life or a interesting job on the radio. You know, if, if you think uh, that sounds like you, all you got to do, folks, quite easily, is just call the station or go to the Rock and Roll Express Radio Show Facebook page and tell me a bit about yourself and uh, you could be interviewed live on air by me. It's very simple, you can get your name out there, you can get your business out there. It's not an advertisement or anything, so don't go thinking I'm advertising your business. I'm just talking to you about your life and whatever else. Things in general, like you heard me in the roadie snake talk. Not quite the same, but you never know. I talk about a lot of things on the road, especially when I'm out there by myself. Yeah, well, it could be a. Believe, it could be believe a. Believe you me, if, if a certain company that I do a few odd, a few jobs for, if uh, they do intend to put a GPS tracker in or a uh, one of the little uh, dash cam things, they're going to hear a lot of interesting things that I say. Yeah, well, there you go. You could be a truck driver out there. Uh, it'll make their hair curl. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, who knows Roadie Snake? Maybe a truck driver out there who wants to get interviewed on live radio. Well, most of the guys I know, they're too busy. Could be a uh, seamstress, a bartender. You know, you don't see that very often as a seamstress anymore. You don't see that job anymore. No, there's, there's one mob in, uh, what is it, um, Mount P, yeah. that does that sort of thing. Very rarely see it. Yeah, I mean it'd be nice to have a few different people come in on a Monday night, occasionally, and it's a dying, it's a dying for a talk. Art. It's a dying art, mind you. You see a lot of it in, the, in Asia, the seamstresses. They do a lot, a lot there. Yeah, but not so much as in this country. Anymore. It's a dying art. It's like everything else. Yeah, what do you expect nowadays? And uh, I just want to ask a personal shout out to the people of the Northern Territory. Thank God you woke up. Thank God I've got rid of labour up there, thank crikey. As I'm sure you're aware of people, we both, me and the Roadie Snake both have different political that views. That lot had to go. The, the Northern Territory lot, yes. Oh. They brought out... Big talk, even changing their things, and it still doesn't, doesn't, didn't do anything. So long as now, this other mob... Yeah. In October, let's try it here in Queensland, folks. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, you haven't, you haven't got a pallet chook anymore. No, You've but... You've got an idiot. Uh, Just because he give you 50 cent fares, mate, oh, so it doesn't do anything. I don't know if you and the other people out there heard heard this one, but um, I think it was old man Catter. He's brought out the old standby again. Should Queensland be split into two separate states? I say so. I'm thinking no, because yes. that, would, that would mean, quite honestly, folks, you would have more politicians more chances to screw up and can you see the leaders in Brisbane giving up any power and influence over the money uh, that you... Yeah, I'll for it. Yeah, I'm you think about for, it. Look, I'm all for a, for, for, for a four day week. Yeah, I'm all for a lot of things but that don't get done. Anyway, let's get on with this before we start bored a bit with that. Oh, I think so. You go and get the barbie fired up and a couple of drinks and what I'll barbecue? be out there with what you. Barbecue? Didn't you see the new one I had put in? As far as I know, mate. There's a new barbecue out the back. Go and have a look. If you think there's one out the back, you go and have a look. Well, I've got to press this button and get the music started. I'll be back out there with you shortly. I'm going home. Bye. Yeah, well, hold on a sec. I'll press this button and join you.